Earl Spence back with Blu-ray for the Terrence Crawford rematch at 147. What's good, everybody? It's your boy, Cardinal Red, Cardinal Red Sports. Let's talk about it. All right, y'all. So, information is rolling out about the rematch between Terrence Bud Crawford and Earl Spence Jr. Some very, very interesting stuff to break down. And I wanted to give my 2,000 nickels on what's being said for anybody left. I'm about 158 right now. Yeah, I'm working with Blue. I wasn't doing sit-ups. I was barely doing push-ups. Um, I did strength conditioning mostly like when the cameras, when the camera crew comes, on see different stuff. All right, y'all. So, wow. I just, you know, basically ran across some information regarding the Earl Spence and Terrence Crawford rematch. Very, very breaking information. And I just have to break it down for all the listeners. All right, so basically, Earl Spence gave a interview recently, and he spoke about his strength and conditioning before the Terrence Crawford fight and other fights. Also, he spoke about him being back with Blu-ray, and he spoke about the 147 fight that is being pushed by Terrence Crawford. It's not going to be at 154 anymore. It's going to be back at 147. And I'm guessing it's going to be for all the marbles again. And it's a strategy behind that. Now, the interesting stuff. I got to get to this because it is very, very juicy. Earl Spence basically said that he wasn't working out the way he normally works out. Now, there were a few fights that... He did some very intense training for, but when it comes to him working out on his normal, on his day-to-day -day strength and conditioning, he wasn't going as hard as he normally does. He even went as far to say he doesn't do sit-ups. <laughs> he doesn't do sit-ups in his normal workouts. He doesn't do push-ups in his normal workouts. So for the recent fights, like the Ugas fight, the Terrence Crawford fight, he said he wasn't even doing push-ups. He was only doing that when the cameras showed up. And, you know, I like Earl Spence, you know, for his candidness now. You know, for him just being honest about his situation. The one thing I noticed is that he never really blamed Terrence Crawford for any of this stuff as far as the first fight goes. But he did definitely take, you know, all the blame for why he wasn't in the best physical shape possible when i started dropping weight you know my legs started getting weak and things like that so i did a lot of strength conditioning like movies for my fight but you know i was i was dirty i wasn't doing sit-ups at all I was doing lower back workout you know i was doing push-ups to a minimum and you know you can see that you know when i waited at the Mark, mikey garcia fight or when I wait, when I wait in at the time for the fight, like my physique and everything was, you know, was different. Now it's very interesting that he said that, you know, I don't even do sit-ups in my normal workouts, and he said that Blu-ray had him doing a lot more stuff to build his core and to maintain his legs and and to keep his balance. He said that the one thing he felt like he didn't have was balance. He said he feels like his legs were very off. He said he felt like he couldn't stand the way he normally could. And he felt like that his core, his balance was very, very off in the last few fights. A lot of this is we all got a vision. You know what I'm saying? We all got dreams. But in, in the midst of that, things happen that we don't know how to deal with culturally and as men and ha as having egos and stand up for what you believe in. So there's turmoil there. Now, here's the thing about it. He's, he said that he's been doing extreme things to lose weight. He said in the Danny Garcia fight, just for an example, that he went into a sauna with a full sauna outfit on. Basically, he had the top on, the bottom on, and he was shadow boxing to try to lose three pounds inside of a sauna 
just to make the weight. Now, you know, that is extremely extreme. One at 10, one being not so extreme, and 10 being extremely extreme. I give this a nine, check it out, extreme cheddar! Because not only is it going to make you sweat, but it's going to suck out the fluids from inside of you as well. And that is very dangerous, and that, that explains why he had absolutely no balance in his last few fights. If you're doing that, he didn't just say he was doing that for the Danny fight. He did definitely say he did it uh, to lose three pounds for the Danny fight. But it seems like that's one of the things that he's been using in the past few fights to try to make weight. And that is extremely dangerous. And we've heard Blu-ray say things like in the past that don't do stuff like that. You should diet down to lose the weight not go to extreme measures to lose the weight. So by the time they get to the scale, they trying to hurry up and pump their body with all these carbs and all the water and stuff like that. When if you diet the entire time, you will have the entire week to fill yourself up with carbs. So by the time fight night comes, it's night night for whoever you in the ring with. Period. And then not only that, we understand there are certain foods you can eat to make you strong. Nah, straight up. That's what, up. Now that's what we're not going to give them. We ain't going to talk about that. I kind of figured all this. I kind of figured that Earl Spence was doing some very high risk things to lose weight. And that's probably the reason he didn't have Blu-ray in the camp because he didn't want Blu-ray to see him doing these extreme things to lose weight. Because Blu-ray is the type of guy who's going to speak up, who's going to step in and tell you, hey, you need to do it this way, not that way, because it's hurting you and not helping you. It's not helping you build muscle. It's not helping you have a stronger core. It's not helping your legs to be stable for you to throw solid punches. And, you know, the crazy thing about all of that is that he did all of that, and Dedrick James, being his coach, never stepped in and tried to interfere. Uh, maybe he never told Dedrick these things. Maybe he never told Dedrick that he was a few pounds off. And if Dedrick is not weighing him every time he comes to the gym, that's a problem as well. You know, you have to be on top of a fighter's weight. You know, you can't just allow them to maintain that themselves. You have to be on top of that 100%. Now, can we blame Diedrich for that? Yes and no, because Diedrich James does work with a lot of fighters. And I feel like if he's asking you directly, you know, what's your weight, how's your weight, and he's not actually weighing you every time he comes in, then he's putting a lot of trust into you as a fighter. And if you're lying to him, you're endangering the whole operation. You're going to make James look bad. You're going to make all your strength and conditioning coaches look bad. You're going to make your nutritionists look bad. Everybody's going to look bad. And everybody's going to start pointing fingers and blaming each other for why this is happening. And really, I think this is why Earl Spence just took the whole load on his back and said, you know what? I made this problem, I have to fix this problem. He was Mike Garcia, I said, the morning of the wings, I sat in the sauna for like two hours with a, uh, <laughs> with a sauna suit on, with a sauna top on, with a sauna bottom on, you know, just sat in there for like two and a half, three hours, trying to shadow box, trying to, trying to drop, I think, what was it, like three pounds? Now, when it comes to the fight being at 147, if y'all go back and watch my last few uh, videos, then you will see I've been saying the exact same thing. It's not that he can't make the weight. It's that he's going through these extreme measures to make the weight. And it's having adverse effects on him when it comes fight night. Now, here's the thing about Earl Spence. And I'm going to end it here because they said that, well, he said that he was about 178 pounds two weeks before the Terrence Crawford fight. I usually get like 180, 185, 175. You know, I stayed around 165, 164. I just, you know, stay running and stay in the gym. You know, I started working out with Blue probably like a month ago. And that is extreme when you think about losing basically over 20 pounds in two weeks. That is very, very extreme. <laughs> that would explain why when Terrence Crawford hit him with a jab, he went straight down. He had no power in his legs. Listen, I'm 5'8", five, 5'9", five, on a good day. <laughs> 140 pounds to 150 pounds, depending on how hard I work that week. You know, my body fluctuates between the... 
And, you know, for Earl Spence to be his size, his bulk, his height, for him to be my size, you know, on fight night, that means that I could probably throw a punch and knock him down, even though in his everyday life, he's about twice my size when it comes to weight. You know, it's extreme for me to try to put on that extra 30 pounds because I can feel it. When I hit 150 pounds, I can feel it all over my body that I don't need to be this weight. And then when I slim down about 10 pounds, 15 pounds, I feel great, you know, even though I'm down around 135 to 140 after that, I feel awesome at that weight. I can move, I can run, I can jump very high, I can hit harder, you know, and for a guy like Earl Spence to be walking around at 170 to 190 pounds and then try to lose all that weight in two weeks definitely explains why we had that outcome. And I feel like that he can make the 147 pound limit, but like Blu-ray said, you're gonna have to diet down and not try to go through extreme measures to lose the weight. And I do feel like that this rematch, you're gonna see a totally different animal in that ring when it comes to Earl Spence. And I think this is the reason why Terrence Crawford wanted no parts of 154, because a 147 strong, top-notch, I broke Ordanius Ugas' orbital bones. Earl Spence is extremely dangerous, but a 154 Earl Spence with, you know, seven more pounds or ten more pounds of muscle on him would be extremely unstoppable. It did take a while for just, you know, my reflexes to come back and, you know, things that really, you know, start clicking. Because the first time I, I fought, it was just... Man, it just seemed like I so it was just seeing it seemed so awkward. It just seemed so forward. I didn't feel it, just felt like I was off. But after like the third or fourth sparring, you know, things started clicking. Y'all let me know what y'all think about all that down in the comment section below. That like button for me. A sure, sure, sure. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Holler at me on all social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter. But you're more than likely to get a response on the tube. So holler at me over there. If you want to collab or feature a product or your channel or my channel, feel free to hit my Gmail because it is a flock of cards at gmail.com. We are man. It's about bread. Fuck what you talking about. You ain't talking about that bread and I'm walking out. Walking out. Sort of like DJ Unk, I get my bud online, call it eBay Funk. Nigga, better prefer to lean. Young keys, that nigga spitting kerosene since I was a early teen. Man, I'm in my mid 20s like a cold day. Niggas in the hood say I did it like OJ. Okay, you think keys ain't got a grip? You don't pain like you walk around without a hip. This is for my niggas zooming up and down the strip. Wood wheel grip like a pirate ship. Niggas better get more cream. Your niggas broke like the levees down in New Orleans. And it ain't no fixing it. Engineer mixing it. Had to wear a coat cause it's cold like Switzerland. Got the hood blistering. All the niggas listening. Throw back well, but shorty thought I played for Michigan. Nah, it's the bill, dude. Still, here's what she'll do. Let a nigga cut long as I bring a pill to. And you don't want nothing with it. Going off the troll, gray goose got me shitty. I go hard for the digits, got the keys to the city. I'ma show you how to get it. You don't want nothing with it. Mine on the digits, if you hating, you can get it. Got the keys to the city. You don't want nothing with it. Mine on the digits, if you hating, you can get it. Got the keys to the city. You don't want nothing with it. Mine on the digits, if you hating, you can get it. Got the keys to the city. Tendencies, young keys, low ten degrees. Hit the industry, 
never scared if it's beat. Ask niggas if they know my name in the streets. These young niggas got it hot like Venice Beach. Shit is deep, seeing narcs riding in the Jeep. I'm on the grind, I ain't been home in the week. Listen when I speak, leave stab wounds in the beat. Riding in the fleet, stuffing hydro in the suite. It's Lucas Keys, nigga.